because when you marry somebody, you're actually marrying their family. I hate to say this. If they have a family that's messed up, you're going to have a harder relationship. Welcome back to the Fish and Coach Show. My name is Brandon Fisher. This is Coach Ratner. Today, we're talking about what you can learn from The Bachelor. Oh my gosh, this is such a good topic. Bachelor, Bachelorette. Who doesn't want to watch that? It is the... It is one of the most popular TV shows that's been rolling for years. Yeah, yeah. And how many people learn about their relationships and how to approach them from this It can be TV good show? to learn from it, and it can be bad to learn from it. Right. And that's what we're going to get into. So let's talk about three things you should take away from The Bachelor and three that you shouldn't. Yes. So first thing, the three things that are done right, we'll go do one at a time. Let's do one at a time. Okay. Number one is that they have a variety of activities. You're getting to know the person you're dating. Uh, in different scenarios that are a little bit outside of the person's comfort zone. Yes, it's good to get people out of their comfort zone to see who they really are. Right. Yeah, especially when they do like fighting, not fighting, but like sports activities and something like that. You get to see who's like who's got the egos that get hurt if they don't win. You get to see the people who don't care if they win. You get to see people's true self. It's a real test yeah. to experience these different circumstances, how you are around other people. Yeah. It's, very, it's a very good uh, thing to learn. Yeah. In a relationship, it's more exciting and you learn a lot more a lot quicker when you see them in different activities and different uh, right. variable scenarios. Okay, number two. Number, number two is when you get to meet the parents, which is really good. It's not true that everyone, it's not something that everyone does, which they should do, is before they decide to either continue the relationship or get married, they have to meet the parents, which I think is really good. That's a great thing. And at what point in a relationship, The Bachelor is one of the last dates they go on, yeah. How early would you recommend, Coach, to I actually meet the parents? I personally, you know, we had a previous podcast called The Four Phases of Love, and the first phase was the crush, and the second one was the research. I think it should be on the research stage before the commitment, before never leaving, because it should be a time. You should, because when you marry somebody, you're actually marrying their family. I hate to say this. If they have a family that's messed up, you're going to have a harder relationship. It's got to happen before you're committed. Yeah, you got to have to happen before you're committed because right. there, you know, when I dated my wife, I met her on the, actually the first date, which I wanted to do. And I, her mom's awesome. And I knew that, you know, if I marry this woman, that I'd be married to an awesome family. It made it much easier to make the decision. That's huge. Yeah. To know that the family of your partner is something you want to be a part of. Yeah. It means that, that that's the biggest green light you could ask for. Yeah. Or the biggest red light you could ask for. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> number three? And number three, the final thing you can learn that we have is saying no quickly. Yes. You're forced into a situation where you have to like, is this to give the rose thing? That's to give she the rose? She sends somebody home. You send someone home or give them the rose or whatever. And you have to make a decision. You have to, you have to whittle down your, your, um, your cast of characters that you can marry pretty quickly. Yeah. So they send them home. And it's at the end of the episode. You have no choice to either commit and move forward or not. That's a, that's a very hard thing to do in a relationship. Yeah. And something valuable you can learn. So right, what, what, what about things that, uh, back, what does the bachelor do wrong? What, what mistakes are they what making we that we should try to avoid from, uh, when we, if we happen to watch this TV show, what should, things that we should avoid that we see that they do? We're not even going to start with this one, but dating multiple people at a time is probably best to avoid yes. if you really are looking for the love of yeah, your life. Yeah, because you can't really open up to someone when you know you have a date with someone in like 20 minutes or even five minutes. I always wonder how they did those dates. Where there's five people on the, the same five, date. Like, That's that that like just makes no sense to me. Like, Can you really evaluate people like that? It's interesting to see how they do evaluate people. You can see a lot of who stands out poorly. Right. But it's hard to develop that lasting relationship with the right person sure. when there's so many people messing with your heart. Yeah. So okay. the real number one, fairy tale dating. <laughs> I always laugh because like they date, they go in these beautiful getaways somewhere on the top of this, you know, this fancy hotel with you know Sting or like the Goo Goo Dolls playing music, and then they have you know waiters and waitresses and. They're all dressed beautifully, and the weather's always gorgeous. Always. And they get there on a helicopter. I'm like, who <laughs> dates like this? Like, who goes, who, who goes on these kinds of dates? And it, it sets up the fairy tale ending, the it's, happily ever after. Which is, we, which we, we also discussed the fairy, fairy tale ending means it's Disney. They always show the last, the last thing in the Disney movies is the wedding or the, or the kiss or the baby, whatever. And it never showed 20 or 30 or 40 years later because it wouldn't be a Disney movie. It would be a murder mystery. Right. right? They don't show that part. And, and people have this false sense that everything's going to be okay once they go away in the horse and carriage. There's not always a horse and carriage waiting at the finish line. No, there's not. Maybe the wedding 
if you have that dream wedding, can look like it. But and after by the way, that, that's what do you hard, do? That's not where the hard work starts. The hard work doesn't start before the wedding. That's all fun. In fact, when you're dating and you decide to marry someone, I mean, it's it's beautiful. It's amazing. It's exciting. It's new. You're getting married. You're gonna have this big party, and you're gonna invite your friends. You're all gonna get celebrate together. It's awesome. But guess what happens after the wedding? You have to go home, and now you have to live this person every single day for the rest of your life. And that's where the hard work starts. And every date and is a lot less glamorous. It is. And that's why the, the bachelor, out of bachelor gives you this false sense of like, oh, look how beautiful it is to, to, to date someone. And it is. It's, it is exciting. But it's not reality. Oh, and how big is the wardrobe of the bachelorette? Oh, I don't want that. I, <laughs> I can't even imagine. I don't notice it. Yeah. Right. But, and, but uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. It's just not the way we wake up. No. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what the purpose of oh, yeah, dating we don't really have, is. We don't have like makeup artists to do our our. Uh, our Eyeliners before we go out on a date. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been on a date with eyeliner. <laughs> okay, number two, and what Bachelor does wrong is is all the drama is public. You get to see everything on TV. Everything that's going on on a date is public information. And the more drama, the better. And the more because what does the TV show? Ha- if they had dates and every date went smoothly and everyone was sweet and nice. And all the guys dating the same girl or girls dating the same guy got along perfectly. Then there'd be no TV show. You know why? Because no one would watch it. Of course. Because they wouldn't be able to sell ad space and so therefore it'd be out of business. Right. So the only way that these shows can do well is to put drama onto the show and this is one of the reasons why the people they pick for the show are going to create drama. That's right. And <laughs> a few people who do it better than others. I mean, they always pick a few guys who are like really like good winners and stuff. But like right. it, a lot of these guys are basically really going on the show and girls too, basically for TV exposure. Sometimes they last way longer than they should. Of course, because you know, think about who these people are. First of all, they're all good looking. Right. You notice that? It's like it's like they're all good looking because these are all people who are trying to be actors and actresses in Hollywood, and they're all probably like waiters and waitresses right now trying to. Wait for the big break. So in the meantime, they go on. Hopefully, they can get exposure and get lucky. You land a job uh, or an acting job somewhere. And maybe find love. And maybe find love. I mean, I don't even... In your own relationship, bottom line, keep the drama to yourself and try to have as little drama as possible. Really, if you have a lot of drama relationship, it's not doing too well. It's It's, not. Yeah. As soon as you start squawking about it to your friends and going on about it, you're really setting yourself up for a public relationship and your friends are all going to weigh in and... It's, it's it's just it's not it's not up healthy for failure. Yeah, um, and the third thing that bachelor do, or bachelorette does wrong is forced time frames, which is good in a, in a sense because it does make you whittle down the people you have to date. But when you're forced to have to meet the parents and forced to have to choose to get married or not, that's not so good. It can. What are some of the big problems with this? With uh, the rushed and expedited. Well, they, they, you have to make a decision without even not. Sometimes, believe me, sometimes there are people who don't need to be forced and should be forced, but there are times people need more time to think about it. And you don't, you don't want to force people. A lot of people do stretch out the relationship way more than it should, but rushing it and keeping it to a time frame that's decided by the TV studio. And there's also more pressure. I, I don't know the stats because I don't watch the show anymore, but they're probably – pressure to get married because the wedding creates a whole whole thing with the news and the magazines and, and paparazzi and like so if they get married it's good for the show and good for ratings so therefore they're probably pressured to get married and the pressure on the time frame to get married and I imagine how many of the fans are just cheering for them to get married yes it's perfect on TV I would be I'm like get married get married you know right. it's fun it, it makes it happy it makes it more fun but in real life you want to have you want to have the encouragement from your family and your immediate team yeah excited about the wedding but it's got to be at the pace you're comfortable with. Yeah. So there you go. If you want to learn about relationships, there are things you can take away from the Bachelor and Bachelor. And things you shouldn't take away from the Bachelor and Bachelorette. So be careful. Have great relationships. Just go into it with having some clarity and wisdom. Like, okay, this is just a show. This is for my entertainment. There's some good things about it. But unfortunately, there's also some bad things about it. And it's not reality. That awareness is going to help you a lot in yeah. your future relationships. No one's going on a date in a helicopter on the top of a fancy hotel with a, with a private concert. At least five years into their relationship. Yeah, you sure. Can, Imagine yeah. it continuing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for listening to the Fish and Code Show. See you next time. <laughs>